Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Good and Do Good podcast, a show where we talk about the different experiences we've had as missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm your host, John Gonzalez, here with my brother and co-host, Jake. How are you doing today, Jake? Good, good. I was just reaching for a drink of water and I accidentally hit my uh, microphone, so hopefully that's not too loud. But speaking of microphones... Anything. Uh, we had a little debacle last week, as some of you may have noticed. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too drastic, but yeah, the microphone uh, was not on or something like that. Or at least it wasn't selected as the microphone that was supposed to be recording. I think it was on because it was it glowing. Was, it was on for sure, but something yeah, happened. So, you didn't uh, I have, it. Yeah, I have double checked and triple checked. So hopefully the microphone should be working this time because I did not spend that money on Amazon for no reason. So um, <laughs> it sounds yeah. good to me. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds crisp. I, I can definitely and like every time I tap it, like I can see that it's working. So good. if it's not working, then it's not because we didn't definitely try. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, uh, my week has been doing good. Um, we have been spring cleaning. Sarah and I both have a lot of boxes and we've been looking through them. And guess what? As always with this show, something missionary related uh, happened. Yeah, that just... always happens. <laughs> <laughs> I um, ooh, I just knocked it. I found um, this folder that has really cool cards in it that my mom made. If you're watching, you'll you can see it. <laughs> it says watch out boys i'm coming in and it has a picture of a camel and some pigs outside of a barn and then um it says inside the card it says happy hump day to our favorite missionary john and uh uh this was when i reached one year point in my mission and i found all of these cards and stuff along with some pictures including a note from jacob which i will read right now uh-oh. Ready? My, how's my handwriting is the real question. <laughs> it's a nine-year-old handwriting. I mean, typical for its time. It says, Dear John, congratulations. You're halfway done with your mission. All of us here at home are very proud of you. Your bro, Jake. Well, I said Jacob, but happy to share that. I was going to say, if it's Jake, then it definitely was ahead of its time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it said Jacob, but... It had notes from all of my family members in there, but there's a lot of other things in here. Like for some reason I had family pictures. I think these are like pictures I had on the mission. So like one is a picture of, of my baptism and one of one is a picture of a family picture in um, at the tabernacle in Salt Lake city. So I, I know mom probably sent these pictures out and I probably used them a lot in our lessons. So. Yeah, actually, it's funny that you mentioned that this week as I was going over what we were going to be talking about our second week in the MTC, I was reading through one of my emails that I had sent to our mother, and it specifically asked for pictures of our family so that I could show <laughs> them to investigators or uh, fellow missionaries at the MTC. So yeah, that's definitely something that you use a lot on your mission. People are always asking about your family, where you're from especially the further away from home you are, the more interesting it is that you're from California, I guess, in our case. Yeah, I was always reaching out to mom to send me some stuff. And sometimes I felt guilty about asking her for things. Sometimes I was like, I need this right now. <laughs> I know, I felt the same. I I asked her in that same email if she could send me like digital versions, di digital pictures of all of my paintings that I had done up to that point. Yeah. Just because, <clears throat> like I had mentioned, people always wanted to know, like, oh, what do you do when you're not doing missionary work? And mm -hmm. yeah, I obviously, I painted and, and did that type of thing. So I asked for pictures of, I think there was one of Bane that I painted, one of the Joker that I painted, and just like all kinds of different superheroes and that type of thing. That's the type yeah. of stuff that I painted back in the day. And I specifically asked them, and I think I said... If you don't know which ones to send, ask John. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I took I took that call and I was like, I'll take this forward and send them all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I definitely had a bunch to choose from. So that was nice for the rest yeah. of my mission. But 
They were they were really cool watercolor picture paintings. Although honestly, I remember, no, I remember ahead, like I remember you painting uh, Superman. I was like, kind of looks like an old man. He doesn't really look like Superman, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it works with watercolors. I specifically <laughs> did not ask for that one because that one is not one that I'm particularly proud of. It's from the yeah. Batman v Superman like movie where like Batman is like going up against Superman and it's like a super close up of their face. And yeah, Superman looks like he's like seven years old. So 70, seven, not seven 70. years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's really hard to paint faces. It's easier to paint masks and well, I mean, yeah. If you're Hence the reason I, face. yeah, I painted superheroes a heck of a lot more Yeah, specifically the ones who wore masks. Anytime I tried to paint like Roger Federer, for example, Ha, yeah. Roger Federer. I'm wearing a Roger Federer shirt doing? today. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe that'll be a thing. Every week, I'll just go over what uh, what I'm alluding to with what, whatever it is that I'm wearing. I think last week it was Imagine Dragons. It was. It was. Yeah. So, um, if you're new to the podcast, we just talk each week. We bring up some experiences that we had on the mission. We talk about like things like last week's episode. We talk about the different miracles that kind of happened in the mission jake was able to finally eat everything <laughs> but, <laughs> i was not. not a picky eater just to clarify i'm <laughs> not a picky eater if anybody is listening it's just i definitely dealt a lot like anxiety when it came to eating in places that i was yeah. comfortable with yeah but yeah i didn't have a problem with that on my mission so that was definitely a miracle yeah and then like first companions jake was from oklahoma mine from peru uh, we talked about mission call openings, and uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up today, I had I had a question for Jake, was did you ever have a missionary tie exchange? Because I remember on my first week as a missionary, we had a missionary tie exchange. I think I actually wore the tie that I um, exchanged with the missionary in the MTC. I literally cannot remember his name, which oh, okay. makes yeah, it makes me makes me feel really bad. He was definitely in my zone. Um, but yeah, I had, uh, a missionary tie exchange with an elder in my zone. I think he was going somewhere in Arizona. Um, and I really liked one of his ties. And so I was the one that suggested the missionary tie exchange. I wore that one this last Sunday, uh, oh, okay. not even knowing that you were going to be <laughs> asking that question. And I don't even wear it that often. Like it's yeah. nice, but it's not like my favorite tie, but, uh, yeah, I, did a few times not just in the mtc mm -hmm. but throughout my mission just with companions and that type of thing and sometimes you know you'd have them sign it on the back in sharpie yeah um, i'm guessing from the question that you definitely had at least one in the mtc yeah we had we had a missionary tie exchange in the mtc i remember um one of one of our actually roommate companions he was from korea gave me his, a really nice um like a uh, blue tie that was that was really shiny a shiny blue tie uh, light blue and um i had it all throughout my mission i wore it several times i kept it after the mission but since then all the ties that i've gotten from the mission they've all like pretty much unraveled but you have to remember 15 years ago if we're going to talk about my age again right jake it's like these ties are 15 years old and, <laughs> and so they don't they don't always last as long as you want them to so so for sure that blue tie which i i actually like that blue tie uh it's it's gone to the dust like it disintegrated it like unraveled <laughs> unfortunately and then i don't know really what... hard to like take care of for like an extended period of time they like do not wash ties in the di or in the dishwasher definitely don't wash them in the dishwasher <laughs> that's definitely not going to work but don't don't wash the washing machine yeah. i definitely did that a few times on mission um, uh, well, yeah i got stains on countless ties and i would always use dish soap to get them out and sometimes it worked but it depended on what the material was so well if you're like me nowadays I spill everything on my shirts, which I, I I wish I was a lot better at, but like I have stains. You all get that over from my... mom. <laughs> Possibly. That's literally, yeah, know. that's literally such a mom thing to do. Yeah, that's that's it's, it's probably a generational, inherited. generational inherited thing from not Maybe just it mom. Skips, but... It skips every other child. 
Because I don't have that you. problem. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, my wife might beg to differ. I literally spelled, spilled something on me like two days ago. But yeah, maybe Sarah. Maybe Sarah's the one that inherited it. Maybe. I don't know. We got to ask her. <laughs> no, we don't have to ask her. We can just assume she doesn't need to. She doesn't need to weigh in on this. I think we can just safely assume. <laughs> We don't well, need to give her a word in edgewise. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. So that's what we do. We talk about those different things. Um, this coming week, we're talking a little bit about our second week, second couple weeks of the mission. Um, for me, it's from June 18th to the 24th, 2008. Yours, I'm looking at your your uh, dates, June 11th through the 17th, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tell me about some, some stuff that happened. Yeah. So I was, as I was reading through these emails, I definitely like had a bunch of memories come to me. One of the main things that happened that week is we had a devotional, which happens every week, I guess, in the MTC, if I remember correctly. Um, but I know that when I was on the mission, or even now, as I've spoken to other missionaries who are currently serving, they're always like, oh, my gosh, like I had Elder Holland come to my mission or to, mm -hmm. to the MTC while I was yeah. there. Yeah. And he like oh, it was the most spiritual experience I've ever had in my entire life. I know I mentioned that because Rachel literally just told me that Elder Holland came when she was in the MTC. My <laughs> wife is Rachel, by the way. And I did not have that privilege, but my claim to fame <laughs> is that I had the Donny Osmond come oh, man. and speak as opposed to an apostle or whatever. I mean, those are important, I guess. But Donny Osmond came and spoke and kind of gave like a little miniature concert. Not really concert, but he like definitely sung at the pulpit a little bit. Like he sung um, that one song from Mulan that he that he sings I'm trying let's to get down to business yes exactly to defeat the huns john having heard it straight from donny osmond you're good but you're not as good as donny <laughs> osmond hey at least i remember the song yes that's true let's get down to business or whatever it's called is that what is no man out of make a man out of you yeah make a man out of you yeah make a man or out something of me like or something. that <laughs> which is definitely the best song from Mulan, in my opinion and i can't even remember it but uh, Don Osmond, yep, he gave us a private concert in the MTC. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, Donny Osmond is a really interesting figure. He's really he's a really cool guy. <laughs> he seems yeah, like I a think, cool guy, at least. Yeah, I mean, he was the teen heartthrob of his time. I know mom definitely had a crush on him, which yeah. I yeah, and does that mean Marie was the like teen, like the female teen heartthrob? possibly i know that they um they had this little thing when they were um when when they would go on tv that that donny osmond was a little bit or was it marie was a little bit country and donny was a little bit rock and roll. oh yeah, that yeah, yeah i've seen that clip yeah they, <laughs> they would sing it together and it was like the cheesiest thing that i've ever seen <laughs> yeah i'm a little bit country i'm a little bit rock and roll or something like that something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing Donnie was a little bit rock and roll. I really hope so. You would think, I don't know. He seems a little bit more rock and roll, in my opinion. He, well, to me, I mean, all I've seen seen him in is like in print, uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. He seems to sing like not classical, but more like musical theater type pieces. They do which... have a country song in that in that play, though. Oh, but I don't think he I mean, sings yeah. it though. It's yeah, it's the brothers that sing it. Well, in in that play, they have a whole bunch of different types of genres of song, which which is cool. It's really awesome play. It's such a good play. Oh we we grew up watching that play growing up, so still have it on VHS. If anybody <laughs> is looking to get a mint condition, I had to show my wife Sarah um, that movie when I um when I met her. I think we watched it together. I don't know if I don't know if Rachel has seen it. I I definitely know it a heck of a lot better than she does, though. Yeah, because every I I can definitely sing along. I think she knows a couple of the songs, but we watched it a lot growing up. So like knowing that that play was like a staple in our family. <laughs> yep. So yeah, um, I remember in the first couple of weeks of the MTC, um, and this is probably true for you too, getting dearelder.com emails, mm -hmm. which which 
Um, I I have. I need to look it up now. I, I think I had it written down. Yeah. So DearElder.com has changed or it's no, no longer available on the internet, but now it's done by MTCDelivery.com. So what their service is, is you can write your missionary and email the day of, and if it's like done before 12 or like done after 12, you'll get the missionary will get it either day of or the next day, which is a really cool service. I, and it was cool because the next, like the, like the first or second day in the MTC, I got a dearelder.com email or not just a elder dearelder.com email. I got several. <laughs> yeah. So that was really cool. When was I it, was out. it like an email when you, or was it like they, you, you sent it through an email and then it was printed out, right? Yeah, so what you do is you like go on this website, which now it's mtcdelivery.com, and you like type in the elder's name, you type in where they're serving and everything, and then you type in a, a text, the text of your of your letter to the and then the MTC um, prints it out for prints it out to be in the mail. So it's really cool. That is really cool. Is it free? It is free. Yes. It's a free Shoot. service. Man, and we then, should get sorry, go go ahead. And then like um they also have not so not free services, which is like um sending a care package to your missionary in the MTC and stuff like that too. That's really cool. I do remember that at one point when I was in the MTC, maybe this second week, but I didn't see pictures, maybe next week. Uh Sarah, our sister, sent me some donuts from the pro the local Provo bakery. Wow, and I really think, cool. you, I think you can do something similar through mtcdelivery.com. You can send like donuts or something like that. And it was yeah. in the, it was in the, like each individual donut was a letter and it spelled out skip you, which was a reference to <laughs> phase 10, I think. Yeah. I, th I think that was something that phase we played. 10. Yeah. Growing up uh, anytime my dad specifically, would um would skip somebody in phase 10 he would put it down super dramatic and be like skip you and uh <laughs> it just became a staple yeah a staple of our family and so sarah spelled that out which i thought that was funny it was something we brought up a lot in our family as just a joke <laughs> yeah so so sarah spelled it out for you huh skip you <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah but i don't yeah i think everybody in in the mtc like in my district in my apartment was super confused they're like what relevance does this even have to like <laughs> missionary work but you're like yeah, dude, no, it, you're like cool. dude it's an inside joke <laughs> yeah or i would try to come up with something clever like skip you it has to do with like how nephi was the chosen brother and it skipped layman who was the firstborn i don't know i don't know i guess i could have gone super deep into it but you're you're acting just like my wife sarah she would she would just like take something and run with it and like say yeah this is from this is from the ancient times of your of <laughs> sometimes i feel like that's what general authorities do giving conference talks they'll pick really? the most random things and apply them to the gospel they'll be like well, this three ring binder um, it, <laughs> each ring represents one of the three degrees of glory. You don't want to be on the bottom ring because that's the one that snaps and will get you. Or so I don't know. That would <laughs> bottom ring is fine, but like well, everything testifies of Christ. We do, but we do believe that. <laughs> that is true. All things denote there is a God. Am I right? Uh, you are right. Yeah, for sure. So um, I I had another question for you. Did oh, shoot. did um missionaries try to take really interesting photos of different things for you i can tell you why i'm asking as well that is the most random question i have no <laughs> idea what you're talking what do you mean interest so so for instance uh imagine a missionary like you're taking a picture of a missionary and they are standing with their hands in like a comic comma yeah and the way that they do it is they take a flash picture of 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 um you and they put a color pencil because you know you have a lot of color pencils as missionaries and they put it so that the color pencil is right in front of the camera so that it looks like 
the 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 glare that comes from the colored pencil looks like it's emanating from your hands in a kamehameha type thing. Did you ever have you? <laughs> that is oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I, I literally have I could lie and, that. <laughs> I could lie and say that we did, but I'd like to think that we've matured quite a bit since 2011 <laughs> or whatever it is that you started your mission. Uh, uh, we definitely have... did take, we did such stupid stuff. MTC, the MTC is just glorified EFY, honestly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The other type of picture, which was so weird. I didn't actually get a picture of this, but I do have a picture of the Kamekama Ya stuff, um, is that, um, in the MTC, they had like um, ironing boards that would come from the walls. Did did you have that in like your rooms and stuff, like ironing boards? I don't um, remember. So what they would do is the mission, the elder or sister. I don't know if the sisters ever did this, but the elder would get on the back of the the ironing board, laying down, and put like a coat over the ironing board so it didn't look like there was an ironing board there. And it looked like you were in the matrix because like the, oh. the, the coat, the coat, like coming down makes it look like you're, you're, um, you're flying or whatever. I don't know that that's what I'm talking about. It's really interesting. <laughs> so funny, funny stuff. To allude to something we discussed last week, John, how did that serve your missionary purpose? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like it didn't. <laughs> No. Oh no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, I, I well, did. So on the much safe side, I never did that. I never did that. I did do the Kamikamiya stuff because that's really easy to do. But not. How I many never times did have that. you? Are, do you even watch Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I don't watch Dragon Ball Z, but oh, but everybody it's... understands the Kamikamiya reference. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're probably butchering it. It's probably like this Japanese word for like power or something, and we're just saying the Japanese word for like fish sticks or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll have to consult my Japanese or whatever friends, <laughs> so. aka Google Translate. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't have any Japanese. Well, I mean, I'm sure I know somebody who probably knows Japanese, but um, another thing that has to do with pictures i had like an obsession this was one of my first first obsessions of being a missionary because i have i had like a couple um one of my first obsessions as being a missionary was printing out pictures i like wanted to always print out pictures i didn't take a i mean i took enough that i have a lot of them but i just always wanted to be printing them out and so like when I found out that like printing out an eight by 10 picture of my MTC group only costs like a dollar, I was like, Oh, I got to hop on this. <laughs> so I did that. And then I also printed out another eight by 10 picture. of uh, um, uh, We talked about on the first episode of our family going to California adventure in my, our first week. And then mm -hmm. I, um, I took a big picture. This was when, california in big letters was in front of california adventure because now that's not a thing and so i took a big picture in front of the ia because ia stands for iowa in the postal code yes okay i do remember <laughs> this picture i very i thought it was really clever at the time yeah yeah i was i thought it was fun cool but anyways i just had did an you, obsession did you hang it up in your apartment like what purpose did you have with an eight by ten photo <laughs> um i would hang up pictures i i remember getting like blue tack to hang up pictures throughout my my missionary experience um because i never wanted to use tape because that would just ruin the picture but so did blue tack and i just didn't know that it would <laughs> you would send them as letters pretty often too you would print out photos and then oh write yeah on, right on the backs and and i do remember receiving a lot of those when you were on your mission it was kind of my way of doing postcards you know, instead of like actually getting a postcard, I would just write on the back of, and it was like, instead of writing a whole eight by 11 letter, it gave me like a five by six or four by six um, thing <laughs> so to write on. You would excuse to write very little to your family back home who is it was it was my way of hacking <laughs> writing very little to my family <laughs> well but it was nice though honestly like i was terrible at like writing physical letters throughout my mission which i'm sure a lot of people can relate to just because in this day and age email is more prevalent 
but I feel like back at the time email, obviously it was still existed, but you sent yeah. like the one email, but there was a lot more of physical writing. Oh yeah, there was. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. So. What else do you have for your second week, Jake? Let's see. I do remember, obviously, we haven't th- even talked about teaching at all, which is like 90% <laughs> of what you practice doing in the MTC. But I did a lot of teaching. Um, I do remember there was this thing called TRC, which I have no idea what that stands for. I'm, I'm not sure. It might stand Probably for the, re- the referral center, but I... I don't know. I I never knew what TRC stood for. I don't know, but to to yeah, I've literally we have a lot of abbreviations in our church, and that was one of them. <laughs> That's true, but you don't use it anywhere except outside of the 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 MTC. I couldn't even remember the abbreviation. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say you don't use it anywhere outside of the TRC, but I meant the MTC. Yeah. Um, but TRC from what I remember was basically you and your companion that you are serving with would go into this little booth Mm -hmm. in the FTC and you would practice teaching to somebody who may or may not be a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so I'm reading, I'm reading here that you thought that they were real investigators. Well, because that's what they told (laughs) us. I, I feel like it was some sort of placebo thing. Like gotcha. would tell they told you all the time you don't know like they could be they could potentially not be a member of the church, and so yeah. every single one of the companionships was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that my person was not a member, and I committed to be baptized. So I haven't even left the NTC yet, and I already have somebody committed to be <laughs> baptized. Like it was wow. like this sign of like status if you could <laughs> if you could like commit your TRC person to be baptized and i remember we had one guy named steven he was the first guy that we taught yeah i i have no recollection of the lesson other than remembering that it was really bad Um, but we did successfully commit him to be baptized in that first lesson Um, oh wow (laughs) which they encourage you to do like yeah they they do yeah yeah at ftc they're really big on commit them on the first lesson and there's like a question before you evaluate the second lesson. Why didn't you commit him to, to, to baptism on the first lesson? So anyways, yep. I committed him to be baptized and me and my companion were like discussing amongst each other. Like, dude, I think, I think he was, I think he was not a member. Like, I feel like he like legit just lives here in Provo and is not a member. We just committed this dude to be baptized. Like we're killing it right now. And then, yeah. That was on a Friday. And then we go back to the TRC um, uh-huh. to teach him again, or maybe to teach somebody else. And we see him um, at the front desk and he's like dressed up in like a suit and like a white shirt and everything. And we're uh-huh. like, Steven, like, yeah, what are, what are you doing here? Why are you dressed so nice? And it turns yeah. out that he freaking worked at the MTC and he <laughs> he was like, uh, uh, cause you're not supposed to like see the missionaries outside of TRC cause you want yeah. them to believe that you could potentially not be a member. He's like, uh, I just had a really, really good weekend. And, uh, um, I got baptized. <laughs> he was like trying to convince us that he, he managed to get baptized over the weekend. And now he was working like behind the front desk at the MTC. And oh, weird. we were, yeah, anyways. So <laughs> that's a strange encounter. Yeah, like time. I feel like, dude, the joke's <laughs> up. Like, we get it. We're not as cool as we thought that we were. You're not a member of the church. Just tell us. But he wanted to like keep the charade going. And I thought it was really funny <laughs> at the time. They but, always uh, they always told us that the TRC was not real investigators. So I don't know. We're, we're like, well, I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe one time Probably, one yeah. person was hired who was not a member of the church and they were like, guys, we can start telling people that they could potentially not be a member of the church. And then that person came and went, but they just kept telling people this so that they would, I don't know, yeah. take it more seriously. But um, anyways, I, I'm pretty sure everybody I tell was a member of the church. Speaking of the TRC though, Right after my mission, I was able to volunteer 
one day in the TRC. You so, can volunteer. They pay people for that now. Oh, for reals? I did not know that. Dude, you are just living way below. Well, I mean, it was kind of like a um, it was kind of like a ward calling. Oh, so, what the? That's I mean, cool not, though. Not a ward calling. It was like a ward, um missionary opportunity that you could do one night out of the something like that so i know some of my friends have been trc like people yeah and so and they've been gotten paid to do it but yeah. i yeah i so i didn't realize you could do that so in other words if you live in the provo area those that are listening volunteer or get paid for being a practice investigator pretty sure Work. you have to be a BYU student Oh, you have to be a BYU student? I'm pretty sure. So if you live in the Provo area and you're a BYU student, gotcha. that, then you can potentially either volunteer or, or get a job there. True. true Maybe true. volunteers don't have to be BYU students. I don't know. I was a BYU student at the time, so I can't confirm or deny. Yeah. However, speaking of wards, like Provo wards, I said 93rd ward last week. I said 39th ward. I've been in both those wards. At the, oh my gosh, Provo. really? You've been in both of them? Yeah, so I can't really, I don't remember which one was which. And I've also, I think I've been in the 94th ward. In so I I was just like really confused. Okay, you week. have an excuse. You have an excuse then because <laughs> I could not remember those numbers. I'd probably get those mixed up all the time too. Well, I didn't remember either, except that during the spring cleaning that Sarah and I have been doing. I, I found some stuff from like old bishops of 93rd ward and 39th ward. I'm like, ah, dang. <laughs> so anyways, I thought that was funny. Yeah, that You know, funny. you bumped, you bumped into um, elder Holland. I mean, wait, no, I, sorry. You bumped into Donnie Osman. You were talking about bumping into elder Hall Holland. Well, I bumped into elder Holland on the mission, or at least he came. I don't, I know it, the, I remember the security tightening during those times. Did you do you remember like ever security tightening? Yeah, we time? had Elder Uch we had Elder Uchtdorf come while we were in the MTC. He didn't yeah. come to speak, unfortunately. He just came to do a visit or have a conference or something. Yeah, we and... had a, we had missionary um, pre mission president seminars while we were there, mm, like yeah. for like a whole week. In fact, like for next week's um, podcast, like. Um, there were like three or four apostles, <laughs> and I remember um, we the the it was so tight, but um, my companion wanted to see the person driving away in the car, and there were like a whole bunch of missionaries, like like ducks gathered around this car, <laughs> wanting to see an apostle. You know, anyways, it's pretty cool. But um, Elder Holland, I think. If I remember, he's just like, hey, hello, how are you doing, elders? And we were just like, hello. And we were just like starstruck, you know. I would freak out. <laughs> Elder Holland is the absolute best. I would just, he is. I would start crying probably. He's so great. Yeah. I listened on my mission during exercise time. Uh, a lot of the times I would listen to a talk by Elder Holland that was put mm -hmm. to this like, this like techno music in the background. And so, like, I would, like, jump rope while I was listening to Elder Holland. So, like, if I were to meet Elder Holland in person, I would uh -huh. probably I would probably just, like, be so starstruck, star starstruck, not because of his talks, but more so just because that core memory of listening to him every single day during exercise time and jump roping to him. Yeah. I'd probably just get, like, sudden, like bursts of energy or whatever if i were to ever actually meet him because i've been conditioned like pavlov's dogs to think of him as this like energizer dude i don't know yeah for sure he's he's such a great speaker you know i um uh, there are uh there are news reports of present day news reports that he's getting better and that he's slowly getting back to the work because you know he was suffering from covid a couple months ago you know hallelujah honestly yeah. like that is super good news because i don't a world without other one is the world that i want to live in yeah for sure i mean i will but i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> uh how was your gym time on the mission like 
what did you end up playing i know you like tennis but they don't have that as an option at least at least in the mtc yeah unfortunately but my companion elder hopkins he was a baller he would play basketball oh and yeah and i like basketball i'm not good at like basketball i love watching it and like i enjoy playing it but like i definitely bring my team down (laughs) um (laughs) but elder hopkins was super talented at basketball and so he would always want to play and of course since he's my companion i have to go do with whatever it is that he wants to do um or be with him physically so he would uh he would go play basketball and i would sometimes play basketball with him or i would like walk around the courts uh and just chat up sister mission no i'm just kidding i didn't chat up <laughs> sister missionary but oh boy yeah scandalous that's one of the nice things about the mtc or maybe one of the not so nice things about the mtc is like yes you have to be with your companion at all times mm-hmm. but there's always missionaries around wow. you wherever yeah. you are so like the sight and sound aspect of it is not quite as enforced sure. as it is like outside outside uh outside of the um mtc yeah so i i definitely like would just like hang out with other dudes and and walk around the track while elder hopkins was playing basketball some of the time yeah i would we i remember going to the place where they they play basketball in the gym but instead elder delgado wanted to play um soccer which i enjoyed i like soccer but it's just a really big running sport so so it takes it out of you so what i actually liked doing was since it was outside and everything my favorite thing to do was play volleyball on where where there are volleyball nets right in front of the provo temple Mm -hmm. so yeah i played volleyball there a few times as well really fun times yeah in like the sand pit like volleyball sand pit area Uh uh-huh yeah exactly yeah yeah sometimes we do like district p days where you'd like hang out with the people from your district specifically um because they all had the same p day as you and everything like that and so we would do uh we would do volleyball with like district versus district which always got super competitive even though in the handbook it says don't get competitive but (laughs) you can't tell a bunch of 19 20 21 year olds not to get competitive anytime they play a sport because i'm still super competitive yeah, well, some people don't get competitive, but that's true. But are. you're you're putting a bunch of testosterone, like, like infused teenage, early teenager or late teenagers, uh-huh. uh huh, into a, like the guys, the elders specifically got super competitive, which I was the same way. Yeah. Well, um, I see a note in here on your side, Jacob, like that. Well, for me, I'm the musical one, but you you had a lot of musical experiences, not just Donny Osmond. Like, do you know what I'm referring to? Yeah, no, I I was in the MTC choir, yeah. which is, I mean, not that much of a flex because like you don't you don't have to try out. Did you, were you in the MTC choir? I too? was too. Yeah. No way, dude. We're <laughs> part of the same fraternity, one of the most <laughs> elite fraternities existing but yeah you don't have to try out for the mtc choir you can just show up and i feel like a lot of people just showed up but for some reason they always sound good it always sounds good it's yeah so with people like me who are not musical i mean like i can sing and i can hold a tune but like uh, i can't well, read notes let's not let's not lie jacob is a great singer he has some great videos on insta and stuff that like show him with the uke and he can like he can carry a tune just like he like, said. He's great. I definitely enjoy it, but <laughs> singing in a choir is different from singing solo true. because there are. there's parts. And I hate parts because since I'm a guy, I always never get the melody. And that's the uh-huh. only part that I know how to sing yeah. because I can't read notes. And so I just kind of have to hear the people around me and kind of match what they're doing. But yeah. it's honestly like a lot of time I'm just do my lips and not actually singing because i feel like an idiot yeah well did you that's self-deprecating and i was (laughs) i am not a self-deprecator uh so (laughs) i'm i'm alluding to john's john's wife earlier said that we shouldn't self-deprecate ourselves on this podcast and (laughs) i am going to be positive so i am good at singing but i can't read music i can't read music and i definitely did not always feel the best 
after yeah. uh singing but we did sound really good yeah the, the it's kind of crazy how like a bunch of people that may or may not be able to sing always sound good at the end <laughs> <laughs> because angels, John, angels are singing with us. I agree. Heavenly even hosts. Though, even though you're trying to be funny right now, Jake, I totally agree with what you're saying. <laughs> I am trying to be funny, but yes, that is, I mean, I'm sure that is a common uh, a common thing that people say as well in MTC. There's so many like little like, did you ever hear about how like somebody once saw I, I don't know if it was a prophet or something but maybe a prophet saw like the heavenly hosts of heaven outside of like the mtc like guarding it and protecting it from the adversary i have heard those things before I, there's so many like folk tales that have to do with the mtc that it's yeah i don't but know but honestly that just sounds like the scripture from, from elijah Moses. elijah oh, wait, yeah, or it, something yeah. you no know it's Oh wait, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Elijah. Uh-huh. Or when Elisha he, or Elisha. One of, one of the Elijahs. Yes. Where, one um, of the Elishas. Where, where he told where he told his servant that he can see lots of heavenly hosts on their side. Yeah. I definitely have heard about that at the MTC, like that there are angels guarding, which honestly, that would be awesome. And I hope that's true. <laughs> the MTC is a really, really special place. So I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I do kind of believe it. Yeah. Well, I think this is about a good time to like talk about our scriptural and preach my gospel nugget. What do you think, Jake? Do you oh, I've got else? a nugget ready. <laughs> it is the nuggetiest of the nuggets. Oh boy. I'm ready for it, man. So I decided this week to share a scripture about missionary work. Surprise, surprise. I have 62 tags in my missionary work section of my gospel library app. And this one stood out to me amongst all of those 62. So um, it's found in Doctrine and Covenants section 35 verses 13 through 14. And I really liked it. It brought me a lot of strength while I was on my mission. And you'll see why here in a sec. It says, wherefore, I call upon the weak things of the world, those who are unlearned and despised, to thresh the nations by the power of my spirit. And their arm shall be my arm, and I will be their shield and their buckler. And I will gird up their loins, and they shall fight manfully for me, and their enemies shall be under their feet. And I will let fall the sword in their behalf, and by the fire of my indignation will I observe them. So this is just such an uplifting scripture. Jesus Christ here is talking about how those who are called to the work are often the weak people. Um, mm -hmm. He says weak. And obviously, that's not that's kind of self-deprecating. But when he says weak here, he's he's referring to um, people like us who are imperfect, who have perfections, who yeah. human human beings, you know. human beings, just like yeah, just like you and me, who need God's help to do His work. You would, I mean, you would expect uh, Heavenly Father wants us to do it right. And so he's going to help us every way possible to ensure that it happens um, according to his will. And I definitely felt on my mission that my weaknesses were, I guess my weaknesses were, to, to I mean, to use another scripture in Ether 12, right? My, my weaknesses became my strengths. Um, yeah. I was not very good at talking to people. Um, I feel like that definitely developed and I became really good at talking to people on my mission and then it regressed after the mission, but on my mission, I was really good at talking to people. Hey, um, you're probably still good at talking to people, right? I mean, you have to work with people every day. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I definitely did develop those skills. Um, cause yeah, it's like night and day compared to, I mean, it, I was. it was better, better than before, at least. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I just definitely wanted to share that and use it as a motivation for any of you guys who may be feeling that you are expected to do something that is out of your wheelhouse or that may not necessarily be your strength. Um, it doesn't have to be. Um, these things don't have to be your strengths because God has more than enough strength to help you throughout all of these trials. Yeah, my favorite line from that is, their arm shall be my arm, 
Um, cause they, you know, they talk about how you don't want to rely on your arm, meaning like your own power. You want to rely on God. You want to trust in God and his, his arm, his, his flesh. And, and, um, with, with his arm and his strength and his, and the trusting in him, we can accomplish all things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, buddy. I did my nuggets. Time for you to give me your nugget. So my preach my gospel nugget is found on like the very first couple of pages of preach my gospel. Um, it's a letter from the first presidency to all the missionaries in the world. Uh, it says, dear fellow missionary, we congratulate you on the great opportunity you have to be a missionary for the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There is no more compelling work than this nor any which brings greater satisfaction. We invite you to rise to a new sense of commitment to assist our Father in Heaven in His glorious work. Every missionary has an important role in helping to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. The Lord will reward and richly bless you as you humbly and prayerfully serve Him. More happiness awaits you than you have ever experienced as you labor among His children the first presidency. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the promises that come from, from serving a mission, you know, uh, the first presidency also has the ability to bless us and they, the blessings are rewards. We're, we're going to be rewarded for, for, for doing missionary work, you know? And, um, I like also that it says that you can um, that there aren't there isn't a compelling work. There's no more compelling work than this. This is this is the most important work. Um, as like Elder Rus or President Russell M. Nelson says, this the the most important work is to gather Israel today. And who who are Israel? Well, everybody is Israel. If once we gather them, you know and. Um, this is the work, and as missionaries, we can do that. So, yeah, dude, absolutely. I I love President Nelson, and I love his emphasis on missionary work that he's had throughout his entire uh, presidency thus far as as prophet. Um, I definitely, definitely resonated with him as a missionary. He became prophet while I was on my mission, um, and even more so now after my mission. I've mm -hmm. just come to recognize just how profound and I guess just how true of a prophet he is. Homie knows yeah. what he's doing. You know what I mean? He is definitely, he yeah, he's got it down to a T. All mm -hmm. right, guys. So we've got a question for you. Um, let's see, John, did you want to share that question with us? Sure. Um, we've been sharing a bunch of scriptures and we want to know what your your scripture favorite scripture is that helped you out a lot as a missionary so what is something from the scriptures that helped you out a lot or it can even be from preach my gospel what what line of scripture did you did you feel helped so. yeah guys we want to hear from you the scriptures are i guess i mean other than my gospel one of the main tools that you use in your mission. I'm sure that there were scriptures that helped you. So please share with us. We want to hear from you. But yeah. with that, I'd say we're done. John, did you have anything else or are we good to go? Well, I, I did want to know what's the whole Roger Federer thing all about. <laughs> oh my gosh, John, you know, <laughs> <laughs> wow. We, we were just so spiritual and now you're wanting to bring, <laughs> I mean, you, you you did say that you were going to bring it up, but I like totally stopped that. But anyways, tell me, tell me. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Roger Federer is the greatest tennis player to ever live. Anybody who tells you otherwise does not know what they're saying. Um, and I'm looking at you, Heather. Uh, she's somebody who is a Djokovic fan and she has no <laughs> idea what she's talking about. But I was a huge Roger Federer fan. I am a huge Roger Federer fan. He has now since retired. Um, so unfortunately, I can't watch him play any professional matches anymore. But um, I was a big fan on my mission. 
I clearly yeah. am now since I'm wearing his apparel. And I would regularly get updates from my brother uh, about what Roger Federer was up to. Yeah, in I, fact, would, I would send you videos. <laughs> yeah, he would, which is definitely not breaking the rules or anything like that. But he would send me videos more specifically like match points, like yeah. celebrations pretty often he would send me. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, no, I still super appreciate that. I don't know how my mission president felt about it, but I was definitely very appreciative of it. And at the end of the email for this week that I had sent to my brother, I said, P.S., I'm going through tennis withdrawals. <laughs> and that is as much that, that, that is just as up. yeah that is just as true now as it was then i'm always going through tennis withdrawals i love tennis so yeah if you guys ever want to talk tennis reach out to me and i will share some ways in which you can reach out to the podcast um <laughs> let's see that transition was awesome uh <laughs> we you can reach out to us via be good do good pod at gmail.com or if you would like to watch this podcast via YouTube, you can also find us at youtube.com slash at be good, do good pod. Um, and please, please, please rate us on Spotify or whatever it is that you're using to listen to this. Um, we need all the help we can get. And that's how we get new listeners. And we just love, love sharing things with you. And we love everything that you share with us. Yeah. Share it with your friends too. Definitely. Those that are going on their mission. And your enemies, because you're supposed to love your enemies, John. I can't believe you would just suggest that they only share it to their friends. Well, hopefully your enemies are your friends. Wow. <laughs> that was so profound. <laughs> I have no comeback to that. Other than inviting our audience to once again, remember to be good and do good. Yeah. <laughs>